The Lord be with you. Welcome everyone to the celebration of Holy Mass. We are on the 30th Sunday in Ordinary Time. This morning's Mass is being offered for the repose of the soul of Thaddeus Pell. Let us just take a moment to prepare ourselves to enter into these sacred mysteries by acknowledging our sins. I confess, O oh, Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have made these sins, and my thoughts, and my words, and my life. Right. 
poor. to do everything 
according to the letter of the law and even going above and beyond that. For example, uh, fasting twice a week, all these things, um, paying, uh, paying a tithe on their, what we would call their, uh, their gross income, you know, before taxes, all these things. And so, when a human being, Pharisee, Muslim, Buddhist, atheist, Catholic, does things uh, to, to, uh, to do, when they strive to do something correctly, they, I should say we, have a tendency to look down upon those who don't do these things. And even though we might not say anything, perhaps out of good breathing, we feel in our hearts a certain disdain toward these people. That happens to everyone, and it's something that we must guard against. You know, we often think of, of Satan and temptation. We think of, of, of really blatant things, like, I don't know, like Linda Blair and the Exorcist or something. You know, Satan is very subtle. Satan is an angel of light. He's fallen. But he's still an angel. We just call him a demon. But he is still an angel. He just no longer has that access. He's no longer in communion with God. So he is bereft of truth. He is bereft, bereft of, of love. And he has no faith whatsoever. But he is subtle. And he knows how to tempt. And we see that from the very first temptation that we see recorded in the scriptures with Adam and Eve. You know, he didn't beat them over the head and say, you know, oh, rebel against God and eat from that tree already. You know, be master of your own life. No. He was very subtle about it. Saying, like, oh, you're not going to die if you eat from that tree. Come on. No, because see, the problem is that God has all this power and he doesn't want to share it with you. And for whatever reason, he finds that you're not worthy sharing in his power, well, appealing to our ego. This plays out in a number of ways in every one of us. Uh, ego, lack of humility, a lack of forgiveness, and these things will take us down to hell. They will, because they bar any growth in holiness which is required for admittance to heaven and it keeps us in our own sin as if we had never ever practiced the faith. Jesus taught us one prayer, one alone, the one we call the Our Father. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. So if we don't forgive, we're not going to make it to heaven. None of us is perfect, and we must remember this. You know, this Pharisee, he thinks he's got everything set. He's, you know, it's like, like life is a game for him. As long as you play by the rules and you don't cheat, then you're all set. You know, it's, it's obviously not that simple. You know, we don't attain salvation in the same way that we might attain fitness by observing the, the prescription, prescriptions of our doctor or, or following the rules of diet and exercise. It's not that simple or systematic. It's an inside job is what it is. See, we know the, the outer aspect of everyone and they know our outer aspect. But we don't know their hearts, and they don't know our hearts. And so that, but God knows our hearts better than we know them ourselves. And so that is where conversion lies. That is where salvation is found. And so we really have to strive to make our hearts more and more like Christ. Of course, first and foremost, asking for that grace because we, not, we can't give it to ourselves. But as Jesus says, you know, God is a loving Father who will give us what we need. He will give us the Holy Spirit if we 
ask for it? Do we? Did we ask for the Holy Spirit this morning? We need the Holy Spirit in order to be holy. And we need to be holy if we want to be saved. It doesn't matter how many times we attend Mass on Sundays and on, you know, on, uh, uh, days of, of obligation. It doesn't matter what kind of rules and regs we observe. You know, we don't need to be on Fridays. All of those things, they help strengthen the faith because they give it structure and they give us a discipline to follow, but they do not contain salvation in and of themselves. We need to work on an interior conversion. We need to ask the Holy Spirit for this holiness that we need to be saved. And we must be very, very strict and demanding with ourselves. We must be very demanding teachers with ourselves. We need to look at our hearts, examine our consciences, and we need to see, you know, where is it that I harbor resentments? Because that's just a form of pride to feel that self-pity over and over again. Oh, this person or this institution has wronged me or has done harm to my loved ones. And so that self-pity just allows me to, to caress and love that little resentment that makes me feel sorry for myself and I just get addicted to that feeling and enslaved by it. That feeling is going to lead me to hell. That's where it's going to take me. And not only in the afterlife, but even in this life. So today let us ask the Holy Spirit to come to our hearts, to come to the hearts of our loved ones, that we may take our salvation with every ounce of seriousness that it absolutely demands and requires, that we may stop playing games with God and that as of today, we may really ask for and strive towards conversion. God bless you. Pray to the Lord. Lord. Now today let us pray 
Uh, together, let us pray <clears throat> our novena to St. Jude. St. Jude, glorious apostle, faithful servant, and friend of Jesus, the name of the traitor has caused you to be forgotten by many, but the true church is boasts you universally as a patron of things despaired of. Pray for me, my so miserable. Pray for me that finally I may receive the consolation and the suffer of heaven in all my necessities, tribulations, and sufferings, particularly Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look, we pray, O Lord, on the offerings we make to your majesty, that whatever is done by us in your service may be directed above all to your glory, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you.
this, these offerings, these holy and unleavened sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant your peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Mitchell, our Bishop, and all those who hold to the truth, and on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, and all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them, we offer you the sacrifice of praise, or they offer for themselves all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, and both of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glories of the Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord, Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clemens, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Nathan, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things you may be defended by your protecting help through Christ our Lord. Amen. Therefore, Lord, we pray, <coughs> graciously accept the sublation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation, and counted among the flock of those you have chosen, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that you may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his Almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing through Christ our Lord. Amen. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all the sacred Christ, a place of requested light and peace, in Christ our Lord. Amen. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, to whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us.
body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ.
pray. May your sacraments, O oh Lord, we pray, perfect in us what lies within them, that what we now celebrate in signs, we may one day possess in truth, through Christ our Lord. Amen. So we have quite a few announcements. Let's see, this coming Friday, November 1st, is All Saints Day, and it's a holy day of obligation, November 1st, okay? Not November 2nd, All Souls Day is not a day of obligation, but November 1st, All Saints Day is. The Masses for the Holy Day will be on Thursday, October 31st at 5.30 p.m. Then at November, on November 1st, the actual day, at 8 in the morning, and then again at 5.30. Uh, also, this Friday is the first Friday of the month, and we will again have our monthly First Friday all-night vigil. More information is on the display case in the front vestibule. Also, at 5.30 Mass, all the First Friday Masses from now on will be Trinitine uh, Masses, the uh, Latin Low Mass. Uh, Saturday, November 2nd is All Souls Day, and the envelopes for the All Souls Day Novena of Masses are available on the front desk in the vestibule. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar with the concept, All Souls is a feast for everyone who has died, and it might be uh, undergoing uh, that last purgation in purgatory. Those who died in the state of grace, but still have some imperfections that have to be purified by, by fire, as it were. So this is for them to alleviate their suffering and to ask them to intercede for us. Uh, following the Mass on Saturday morning, again, that's Saturday, November 2nd, we will have our traditional All Souls devotions. So please come to the special Mass to pray for all of your dearly departed friends and relatives. Uh, Vespers will be celebrated today at 4.30, and books will be provided. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. The Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.